The general prologue to the Canterbury Tales is the most famous work of Geoffrey Chaucer. In the prologue, Chaucer being the narrator himself describes not the tales to be told but the people who will tell them. Set out in the 858 lines of Middle English, using rhyming couplets made up of iambic pentameters, the general prologue establishes the frame for the tales as a whole. Chaucer praises the month of April as the rains and warm western wind of this season restores life and fertility to the earth and also prompts people to go on a pilgrimage in England. Chaucer aptly captures the attention of the audience by using various phrases to give the description of the serene environment where the story is situated. Chaucer is the narrator of the general prologue and he himself is going on such a pilgrimage, staying at an inn in Southwark near London called the Tabard Inn. Using an effective transition from the description of month, seasons and environment, Chaucer shifts to the description of the Tabard Inn where he meets a group of 29 people making a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Thomas Becket in Canterbury. Chaucer says that the group accepted him as a part of the group to be on the way to the Canterbury. That night, the group slept at the Tabard Inn and woke up early next morning to set off on their journey. To remove the monotony of the journey, the host of the Tabard, Harry Bailey, proposes that he joins the group as a guide and that each pilgrim should tell four tales, two on the outward journey and two on the way back. And whoever tells the best tale will win a free supper, that is, at the other pilgrim's cost when they return. The pilgrims agree and Chaucer warns his readers that he will repeat each tale exactly as he heard it, even though it might contain frank language. However, Chaucer's plan of telling this 120 stories total was never completed and we have tales only on the way to the Canterbury. In lines 35 to 42, Chaucer says that as he has time and space, so before telling the tales, he would like to describe the 29 travellers. Who they were, what they did for a living, their physical appearance, their occupation, etc. Thus, in the general prologue, Chaucer describes not the tales to be told, but the people who will tell them. His keen observation and the minutest details of their characters, their dresses, their looks and their manners make the pilgrims appear lifelike characters. Chaucer portrays the characters in a diversified manner. Irony and satire is the most conspicuous ingredient in Chaucer's characterization of the pilgrims, be it in their diverse social classes or in their conflicting moralities. Medieval society was a hierarchical one divided into three main estates, the nobility, the clergy and the labourers. The exquisite narration style in which the Chaucer introduces each of the pilgrims perfectly represents an image of the medieval English society and simultaneously reflects numerous social flaws present at the time or simply shed light on common human follies. The order of the portraits of these characters is also important because it provides a clue as to the social standing of the different occupations at that time. The first group of characters to be introduced by Chaucer are the knight, his son squire, and his servant, the yeoman. The knight is traditionally seen as one of the few idealized characters among the pilgrims, representing the chivalric ideal, his son squire, a young gentleman who represented courtly love, and the servant yeoman, who is good and loyal at his job. The knight is even the teller of the first tale in the Canterbury Tales. The second group of pilgrims to be introduced by the Chaucer includes members of the church and its religious hierarchy. This group included the prioress, the monk and the friar. They all take vows of poverty, chastity and obedience and are expected to behave in a pious or devout manner but their hypocrisy, greed and corruption is aptly satirized by Chaucer. Following this class are pilgrims whose high social rank is mainly derived from commercial wealth and this group included the merchant, much of whose money was illegally made, the sergeant of law, the clerk and the franklin. The next class of pilgrims to be introduced by Chaucer are the guildsmen, who are specialized laborers and included the haberdasher, the dyer, the carpenter, the weaver and the tapestry maker. But none of these members tells a tale. They are all lower class characters despite wearing fine clothes and they even hired a cook for their journey. They all joined together to have more bargaining power for their businesses.
Next comes the middle class group of pilgrims who occupied the next lower position of social rank. It included the cook, the shipman and the physician as well as the wife of Bath. All members included in this group are master of their trade, knowledgeable and well travelled. The next group of pilgrims included the virtuous, poor or lower class and included the parson as well as the plowman, who although are very poor but represents all of the Christian values. And lastly comes the group of pilgrims which included those of the immoral lower class. This group included the mansipal, the miller, the reeve and the corrupt sumner. While some of the pilgrims follow the stereotypical image their titles evoke, others completely diverge from what would be expected. And the description of all the pilgrims by the Chaucer is humour interwoven with satire, which he directs at varying degrees at the society and traditions of his time. The lines 43 to 78 of the general prologue talks all about the knight, the first pilgrim to be described by the Chaucer. The knight is a man of honour and noble conduct. He himself is an embodiment of the ideal human. He wears a dark fusion tunic that had armour stains. His appearance is shabby but his horses are top-notch. He is strong because he has endured many battles and has fought many battles all over the Europe. He is wise, modest, chivalrous, truthful and has all the qualities about the knighthood and nobility. He is brave, experienced and never says an unkind word about anyone. Talking about the military career of the knight, Chaucer says that the knight has participated in no less than 15 of the great crusades of his era. His fighting spanned 40 years and over 15 battles. Once the knight had been with the ruler of Palatia to fight against another heathen in Turkey. Since then, he had enjoyed a noble reputation. On many occasions, he had sat as the head of the table as the most honoured person among the knights of all the nations who would gather in Crucia. He had fought more frequently than any other Christian knight in Lithuania and Russia. He took part in many noble expeditions on the Great Sea, but despite his huge success and noble lineage, he was practical, humble and self-disciplined. The knight is one of the few characters who are not satired by Chaucer in the general prologue. The knight was travelling with his 20-year-old son, the squire, and his servant, the yeoman. The knight's tale in the general prologue is also an obvious example of courtly love. So everyone, that's all for this video. The remaining pilgrims, their description and the summary of their tales will be covered in the next video. So stay tuned to my channel. And if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.